Hi, this is Erin from the Etsy shop Gamecrafts, and this is part two of creating a pattern using KG Chart to import and export. This video assumes you have already prepared your image for importing. If you haven't, check out part one. So the first image I'm going to import is my sprite picture from MS Paint. Um, you'll want to make note of what the dimensions of your picture are. So this one is 26 by 30. Uh, that'll be important when we import it. So here is KG Chart. I have KG Chart LE. It was a free download when I got it. I think they have a paid version now, but you may still be able to find an older free version online. And I will choose import and find that image. You can give it a title at this point. You can always change this later. Um, I'll select Aida for regular cross-stitch fabric, or you can choose linen if you're stitching on linen. Um, this number here is the number of threads that you stitch over. So for regular cross-stitch, this is usually one. You stitch in every hole. Um, if you're using linen at, at a higher count, um, it's common to stitch over two threads, so that's why it defaults to two. But you'll probably want to change this to one if you're doing regular cross-stitch so that your dimensions are calculated correctly. So now we need to set the width and height and it already knows that because it's scaling it proportionally. DMC is fine for the type of thread. And then the color count here, um, it won't necessarily use 60 colors if your image doesn't have that many. For ours it'll probably just use four. But if you're importing a complicated image, you can limit the number of colors used here. You can put it down to 20 or something if you only want to use that many. You can also change the size here if you want to and let the pattern software scale it larger or smaller, but I find it's much easier to have that done ahead of time. So this is ready to go. And there's our little pattern guy. These right here are how you zoom in. You can set the grid at different sizes. And this symbol shows you the thread symbols on the pattern. And this is the grid. So if you turn all of those off, it just looks like it did in paint. Uh, this one, called Real View, gives you what looks like a stitched uh, version of your picture, so you can see what it'll look like when you're done. Over here, you can choose the selected colors to see which ones it chose for you. 310 is black, 946 is an orangey red. Um, that may actually be more orange than I would want to use for this pattern, just knowing that color personally. I would probably go with uh, 900 or so. You can click this, change, search for a color you'd like, say OK, and now it's more of a traditional Mario red kind of color. Um, that's really the only downside to pattern software is the colors are not that accurate. Uh, what you see on the screen right here may look great and then when you actually get the fabric or the thread colors in real life they don't match what you're looking at on the screen so until you just know by eye oh 900 is going to look better um, take your pattern to the thread store or you know wherever you're getting your thread and hold it up and hold it up choose it by eye don't just trust the number that's on the pattern because there may be a better choice the pattern will get you close. You won't ever... Actually, I have been disappointed before with what it chose for me. It should have been a gray, and they had me stitch with more of a green. And at the time, I didn't know better. I was like, well, the pattern says it's green, so it must be green. I'm sure it'll look good in the end, and it didn't. So, trust your eye uh, more than the software. For this particular image, the blue background color, I don't actually want that in my pattern. Um, so I'm going to just right-click it and say delete and it just removed all of those stitches for me. So now if I show the marks and the grid back on there, my whole pattern is just the shape of Mario, which is what I wanted. So now that that's ready to go, the most common thing is to either print it or save it as a PDF. So either way, you'll go to Preview Print. Here you can choose the options. If you only want the symbols, you don't want to print all the picture, you can do that. Um, you can zoom in a bit more so you can see it would actually print all the symbols, 
but I find it much easier to print with the colors there. You can also check color if you want it to print in color. And you can even set, let me zoom back out, oh, not that much. You can set the mesh size to be bigger, so on your piece of paper, the picture's bigger. You can also go smaller if you have a large pattern and you want to fit more on the screen. Um, if you have a large pattern, sometimes it's nice to add the finished image as like a cover page. For our pattern, it's pretty obvious what the pattern is by looking at it, but if your pattern takes multiple pages, sometimes it's nice to have the first page be that finished image as a cover. And you can choose your printer. So this is my actual printer. Uh, Cute PDF is a free PDF writer. I also have Adobe installed on my computer so I can actually print to Adobe, but if you don't, you can download this free PDF printer, select that as the printer, and click print. And it will pop up a print dialog right here. Just save it to my desktop as mario.pdf. And that's all there is to it. If I wanted to print it to my actual printer, I would just choose that my normal printer and say print, and it would print the same thing. And you can save this, obviously, so you can go back and just save as Mario. And now I have a KG chart file saved, so I can open up this pattern and edit it later. KG chart files, the abbreviation is .sth. Now I'll import the other image. So we'll call this one link. Still Aida, still one stitch per thread. Our width on this one was 140 because we resized it ourselves. Um, for this one, there are a lot of colors, so I'm going to import it a couple of times so you can see what the difference is. One time I'll limit it to 30. Let me zoom out on this one and we'll do the real stitch view here. So here you can see the colors ignoring the background, even on his face, just look a little grayish, um, not as vibrant as the uh, original here. Let's get rid of the grid so we can see. It's all right, it's just kind of the grays look a little green. Um, so let's try using more colors. Let's import it again. No, don't say this one. And let's go 60 this time, see if that does a better job. A little bit better, there's a little red here. So it's just kind of your call, how many colors you want to use. And then when you're actually stitching it by eye, if you think this gray looks even weirder in person than it does on the screen, just change it. Use what you think looks best. So obviously this background we want to get rid of. You can use a selection tool to get rid of a whole lot. I just hit delete there after selecting a bunch. I'm going to turn the grid back on and zoom way in so we can see the detail here. So this is going to take a while to delete all of this background, so I'm going to skip the video ahead for you. I did want to point out as I'm erasing these that the very last color where it's kind of like, oh, do I want that one or not, I usually get rid of them because it can kind of give a weird outline to your image. So I would cut it down all the way to the first one that's a full color. And you can, again, use your eye, use your best judgment on that. But if I were, for example, to do this, leaving that last one that had any hint of original color, especially if you were going to stitch this on black fabric, each of these little grayish green spots would stand out and look kind of like a weird halo on the image. So I like to get rid of all those and just leave the original full color as the edge. Another good thing to do as you're erasing 
is to check every now and then with the symbols turned on because here you can see there's a couple of white colored stitches that I would have thought were just background but like I had already erased them so every now and then it's good to check here to make sure you're erasing even the white stitches in the background. If you need to change to a smaller eraser, like to get this little row of one here, you can choose your eraser size over here. And get down into the little grooves. Alright, so I just finished all the erasing. I'll zoom out to make sure I got all the background out of there that I want. Let me change to the stitch view so I can see what it looks like on fabric. Looks pretty good. So the exporting steps, or the printing rather, is exactly the same. Just go to print. This is an example of, you know, this is more than one page pattern. So you may want a title page here to see what it looks like. That's the finished image checkbox. Page 2, page 3, page 4. So it seems a little silly to have 10 stitches on a page. So this is a case where you may actually want to make your mesh size a little smaller. So it jumped me back to page one. Let's see what that did. Oh, now it's even worse. So let's go one click smaller. Okay, now it's just showing me empty space on the last page. Um, let's go back to the pattern and actually crop it so that we don't have those empty spaces on the outside edge. And then under edit, crop to selection. So we just got rid of some of those blank rows. Now when we print, it already says it's only three pages. Oh, let me add the uh, finished image there. So now we have three pages, two pages of pattern, one page of colors. For a pattern this large, you may want to not do the color um, or the background if you're printing it. Uh, Fill background is if you had like the fabric color in there, so that doesn't matter because we have white fabric, but fill is the actual stitches. So just you can choose if you're printing it onto paper. Sometimes the colors can bleed and it makes the symbols hard to read. Um, if you're saving it as a PDF, might as well save it with the colors so it makes it easy to see. Again, this is Erin from the Etsy shop Game Crafts. If you missed part one, you can get to it here, or check out part three using PC Stitch to create your patterns.